Hello everybody and welcome back to Tony Northeastern and I hope you're all keeping safe and well. It was a moonlit night in Old South Shields when you heard a voice of an old hacienda La No, I'm not going to go into a song. I just thought I'd uh, show you what this station bill looks like in the dark. You've probably seen it before in the dark and this is the subject we're going to be talking about and that's lighting up the roof that covering the platforms Like I said, we're going to be looking into the lighting and cladding of this roof. Um, I think we touched on it very briefly in the last video. Um, yeah, so in order to put the roofing um, supply in, I'm going to have to do a little bit of cladding first. Um, so let me just show you the power pack or battery pack I'm going to use. Well I've uh, had a little bit of a think about it and um, I've got to start from here. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to stick this battery pack underneath this paneling so you can't see it but you might be able to see it very very slightly on the inside of the roof but um, I'm not going to worry about that too much as yet. Um, I can come up with something to disguise it later on. So as you can see, I've lied all the LEDs in loosely for the moment. So once I've glued that on, I can start working along the roof, gluing the cable, as it were, to the trusses. And Hopefully, there'll be enough lighting to come up the other side of the platform. So, as you can see from this angle, you can barely see the battery pack in that far left corner. Um, this is about as far as I can get my arm um, up through the station. Um, about halfway through, so that's good. So what I'm doing at the moment, I'm just super gluing this fine wire onto the trusses with the LEDs pointing down over. So I'm having to twist the wires each time and trying to keep them as straight. As you can see they're a bit wavy at the moment but hopefully by the time I get to the end they'll be nice and straight and then I'll be able to solder some more wires to the end of the axis of where I've cut the LEDs to here. Feed the cables up the inside we can barely see them, bring them back down and then run them down the other side. So let's just see how I get on. What I'm doing at the moment is I'm gluing two single cores together um, to make a twin core so that um, it looks a lot tidier when it goes across the apex to reach the other side of the steelwork. So it's just a case of a little tiny drop of super glue and then just run it along the joint. And that way it's not um, it doesn't become untidy because it'll just sit in the recess of the A-frame and it'll look a neat job. So even if you do manage to see it, the cables are not just hanging, if that makes sense. Anyway, that's the 
the plan. I was uh, talking to Alan the other day from Dragon Junction and he, he came up with a suggestion um, regarding the roof about um, having a row of pigeons sitting on the on the, um, the, the one of the trusses <laughs> uh, yeah, well, that's Alan for you just keeps coming up with these ideas uh, a lot of fun with it though so that's what I'm doing here just gluing these together Before I can attach that uh, grey cable to the ends of this LED lighting, um, I've got to strengthen up the fascia. Um, it's only glued on by these truss supports here with super glue. And as you can probably guess, it's quite delicate. So we know we have the windows going in here. So what I've just made is I've made a strengthening piece. As you can see, it's got the lip on it, which will sit on this lip here. It's designed so that a card of one mil thick can sit in there nice and flush. And then just rest on that ledge. So that will be super glued in there. And that will give it its strength um, on all four corners. So we've got one in here. And then obviously there's a couple more at the other end. And then I'll be able to pick that up and continue working with it on the bench. So those pieces of card I made earlier, as you can see, I've scribed them and I've painted them with matte 148. And basically that's what the cladding's going to look like inside. So with those four pieces glued in, it this has really stiffened up the fascia so it's uh, made it a lot easier to manhandle it off the station and here's where the battery pack is and you can barely see it through that window so what I might end up doing is painting this battery pack the same colour as the uh, cladding there so don't forget that's going to rep, uh, replicate itself all the way down this side. And here's where the wire is. Um, I might paint that, maybe paint it black to make it a bit more obvious that it's um, some sort of uh, trunking run along there. Supporting the lights. And there's the other end. So the next thing I'm going to do is run the cable along that inner edge of the fascia inside there, right in that crevice. And then obviously the cable then will run along the inside of there. So the idea is that the lighting um, just be over the platforms we have moved on a little bit and, um, and the lights are now installed into the roof uh, you can see the cable there for the LEDs and they're very very fine LEDs as well you can just barely see them but what I've done is I've put some green paint on the top of the LEDs. Bear in mind these LEDs are facing down. So I've had to twist the cable to get the LEDs to face down. So that has worked out quite well. So I'll just uh, leave that to dry. But um, moving along, um, you remember that cable I super glued together? Well, I've super glued it to the underside of the apex, and you can barely see it. 
and if you do see it it'll look like one of these steel frames and here's the joint here where the cable comes across and meets the LEDs and it's exactly the same on the far side so we have 10 LEDs either side and I think it's just enough to light up um, the station but we shall see uh, in a minute when we uh, turn the lights on so it's been an hour so uh, as you can see I've switched the LEDs on and it's just enough lighting it's not overbearing and basically it just lights up the platforms so I'm quite happy with the way that that's turned out and here's what they look like on the top side they're not as bright this side due to the green paint Now that the lighting's done, things are going to slow down a bit because, uh, well, obviously, scoring card like this does take up a lot of time. Now this section is going to go above the window section, which uh, I'll come on to in a minute. Um, as with the four strengthening bits, I have doubled the card up at this end and left a lip. So that will glue onto the fascia and this will just stay as normal and sit on the uh, trusses uh, glued on. Uh, yeah, so this is going to take a lot of time and the doctor recommends two hours of patience three times a day. No, that's six hours. Yeah, possibly could take six hours. Well, that didn't take as long as I thought it would. Uh, roughly about this long, which is roughly about 600 millimeters. And uh, at the end, where it joins on to the next bit of cladding, I've left a tab. You will see this later on when I come to um, installing the cladding. So that's the first section. So let's see how many sections we can do this weekend. Meanwhile, roof side, I'm starting to lay the card in. So the piece you saw me scribing is this piece here. Nice straight piece, no problem. Here, from this point on, it starts to curve. And as you can see, with this piece of card, it's not straight it bent so uh, what i had to do was find a center point which i marked on here find a center point there and there and cut it in a curve it's not a straight little cut because if you have a if you cut it straight you end up with a dirty great big gap here and here so what i had to do was mark it here, mark it here and just slowly cut it away until that fitted in up against this tie-in bar and then just slowly do the same with the base here. Now I'm not too fussed if there's a fraction of a gap which you can see there and there because once this is in I'm going to put a uh, a fine bead of paper along there to represent some sort of um, steelwork or lip if you like and then I'll be painted that grey as well so that will just hide any um, gap issues so now that that's done the next thing I've got to do is describe this package
I have now painted the um, cladding, as it were, for the inside of the roof. But before I stick it down, what I'm doing is just getting the rule here and just taking off the paint as I'm going along so that the glue sticks to the metal rather than the paint. Otherwise, the chances are uh, the super glue might take the paint off and therefore become loose. So that's what I'm doing there. So I'm just using ordinary cheap super glue to retain the card. Don't need much. There we go. By pre-scribing and pre-painting, it saves me the hassle of trying to paint in between all these trussles later on. And I think I've got the effect that I'm after. And in the meantime, the scribing goes on and on and on and on. Because I'm going to have to do this for the other side and the other side of the tiled pieces. So, like I said, goes on and on and on well that went on for a little bit as you can see I've done all the lines for that side and we have a tab here it's twice the thickness of card but I've got a little step there so that doesn't foul up on the original roof and that there is where it's going to be super glued to the fascia and at the other end we have a tab, oops, as you can see I've been doing the tiles as well. So the next piece of tile will be glued onto there. So that took an age to do. So basically what I've done is I've measured the tiles of a piece of Medcalf and copied it onto here just by scribing with a pen. Uh, that took forever. But the devil's in the detail. So this is what the cladding looks like when it's painted. Um, obviously this would go on the inside. And uh, this is the last piece that's going to be put on for this week. So I'm just uh, putting a bit of soup glue along the edges of this trusses. I've got to be quick with this. I'll do about four or five trusses at a time. Because you know the super glue just runs away otherwise. And just slot that in. So now you can see where the battery pack is and obviously I will paint that the same colour as the uh, panelling and try and blend it in. I've just turned the lights up for a second just to see how dark 
or light it is without the cladding on. Uh, as you can see, that side has got virtually no cladding on at all. There's a little bit just there, as you can see. But if we go round to the right, there's a fair bit more cladding on. And it's not going to really totally black out the station, which is good. So that would be ideal for filming. So this side, uh, we've done a fair bit this week and I managed to put two tiled sections on. That's the straight bits. One piece there and one piece there. But however, that middle bit with the curve is going to be a little bit tricky to do. I'm going to have to measure it point to point and try and cut the curve. Then I've got to scribe the tiles on so they match exactly in line with these tiles once the card has been cut. But uh, yeah, we've done quite well this week. Shall we put the lights back on? So the cladding really does show the lights up as you can plainly see and uh, couldn't quite see them before and it's just a nice light tone not over over Zyla. so I think uh, going for the battery pack was a good idea so I hope you've enjoyed what you've seen and uh, until next time whatever you're doing on your railway just have fun bye for now bye